Welcome to Navigating Change Month. I'm chatting with Polly Warren. Polly, tell us a bit about what you do. Hello, Emily. I am Polly Warren. I'm a health and wellbeing coach and I help women navigate this change, this perimenopause, menopause rollercoaster of a change and really help to make it as smooth as possible and to give women some tools to help navigate this change and that and those tools really consist of diet lifestyle change well kind of tweaks to help make this as easy as possible so i mean this month's topic was basically made for you it was it was <laughs> <laughs> okay so i think we can look at this sort of from two different ways can't we we can look at the kind of the the acceptance around what's changing in our bodies and in our lives and then also the changes that we can make to make it better. So should we start with the acceptance side yeah, let's and then that. move on to the sort of little changes? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I think the acceptance piece is actually probably one of the hardest because I think as we approach midlife and we're kind of, we are, as we all know, being pulled in all the directions, we're busy in our careers, we might, you know, all the things, parents, some of us who have kids, it's busy. And then perimenopause creeps up on us. And I think a lot, so many of us just don't think we're ready. We're not ready for that. We, and, and because so many, and hopefully this is changing, but because so many of us are, have been unprepared, it makes accepting those changes really, really difficult. Absolutely. So the great thing is what you're doing and what we're all trying to do is to kind of change that in the sense that pe women are more prepared. And I think this whole piece will be so much easier. However, there is still an element of accepting that we are approaching middle age, things in our bodies are changing. And that's, you know, that's a that's a big, particularly when it's to do with our reproduction. And for some women, it might be that, you know, they haven't had children and maybe they didn't, never wanted to have children, but it's still part of their body, which is changing. And it's sort of saying goodbye to that. For some women who have had children it's quite a big kind of emotional time because you're again saying goodbye you're, you're not i think it's an important time to acknowledge all the things your body has done in producing these children but again it's you know it, it is it's an emotional time and for those who perhaps wanted to have children and then haven't been able to it's a particularly difficult time because it's accepting that actually maybe it's not going to happen in the that that way in the way that you hope so I know that it can be incredibly difficult and an emotional time yeah absolutely and I I agree with you I think for that for that category of women for whom children were always in the plan and then it hasn't happened for whatever reason I think this it must be the navigating the change must be hardest for that group I think yeah abs absolutely on an emotional level certainly yeah, absolutely. And I, I totally agree. And I, I don't know, I was talking to someone the other day and actually they had had children, but they ended up having a hysterectomy and actually found very, very helpful at that time uh, a pro to, to kind of almost have a, a sort of a, a ceremonial process of actually thanking their body for all it has done, even if it hasn't done what you've wanted to do and actually sort of then trying to move on for it. It's kind of almost like trying to cut the ties of of, of what the past has been and moving on to new pastures. And sometimes and I, I think it's that's good a to really, mark that. I think that's a really strong thing for general, I mean, you know, even just, even taking out um, motherhood, childbirth, all of that aspect of it, actually just to, to navigate the change, to find that way of going, okay, that's the past, this is the present and that's the future. Whether that's with a sort of a ceremony of some sorts, whether that's with journaling, whether that's with, it doesn't matter really. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's very individual how you find that, but finding that peace with it, with exactly. the fact your body's changing shape, with the fact your hair is changing, your skin is changing, your, your memory might be changing. You know, so many things are different now. Yeah, and ex and acknowledging those feelings, Ignor mm -hmm. not ignoring them and sweeping them under the carpet, which we're all so good at doing, yes. but actually acknowledging those feelings and feeling them and letting them sit there. Because when we sweep them under the carpet, 
then that they're always just going to crop up. It's like whack-a-mole. They're going to pop up somewhere else along the yeah. way. So it's actually being able to feel the feelings, accept them, and only when you get to that point when you're going, okay, I am actually feeling like this is scary or I'm not ready for this or whatever the feelings are, then, and, and you're right, journaling is a great way of doing that, um, then it's much easier to move on and find all the joys that are moving on into the next stage of life. Which brings us perfectly <laughs> to part two of how do we start making those little changes that, that, we, that will make us happier in, you know, in, in part two of life? Yeah, well, so change gets a bad rap because it can be difficult and there, are, and there are reasons for that. And, you know, I like to think of it, you know, if you think about it like a jungle in your, in your, in your mind, in your brain, which has been formed over the whole of your life, tangling together with all your beliefs and your actions and all the things that have gone before. And the habits that we already have, have kind of created really lovely, well-trodden, wide paths and these are our neural pathways, which are our, gen which are our habits, which we're doing now. So in order to change, what we have to do is we have to carve new paths, well, hack new paths yeah. down through this jungle to create wider paths again. And, it, and, and it, that can obviously feel difficult and it can feel uncomfortable, but it's not impossible. And the ways we can do that is by, firstly, just being really kind to ourselves and acknowledging that change you know, it does require a little element sometimes of feeling uncomfortable. So what, that's why we've got to make it as easy po as possible. So it's about breaking everything down into the smallest, tiniest step possible because this way we can trick our brain into thinking, okay, because our brains get freak out when it comes to change because it feels like it's um, threatening our survival because it, this is all from thousands and thousands of years ago when we're evolving. So we've got to trick it into thinking, okay, I can manage this. I'm okay with this change. So if we break our actions down into really small steps, we can do it. So, you know, rather than going, okay, I'm going to start working out now. I'm going to start running. Rather than going, I'm going to run for 20 minutes and you've never run, you know, you haven't run at all before. Go for five minutes or even two minutes. It doesn't really matter. Just put your trainers on and go and set yourself a very small goal because if you achieve it, you're going to get that feeling of like, yes, I've done it. And then you'll get the happy feeling and then you're so much more likely to go back and do it again. Whereas if you set yourself a 20 minute goal, you don't achieve it. You're going to feel terrible about yourself, really rubbish. And the likelihood of trying again is wiped out. So that's really important, just to make it simple and easy. Absolutely. Um, so what else can we do? I really like ta tacking anything new you want to add into your life onto an already existing habit you already have. So for example, it took me a long time to, to form a meditation practice and I really felt that this was going to be very beneficial for me and I, you know, that was something I wanted to add into my day and I just was really struggling to find a time, I just couldn't seem to do it. So I worked out that actually when I came out of the shower and my hair was wet, which I generally wash most days, and I was putting on my HRT gel, which takes a little time to absorb, I literally would sit down for two minutes to start with and whilst all that was happening and just sit and breathe and i just built it up from there and that is now i've gradually maybe added a minute here added a minute there sometimes i keep it at two minutes sometimes i do 10 minutes but actually i've now created a new habit that after i have my shower yeah i sit down and i take some time to myself and and it's know. and that time for anybody who is using the hrt gel we all know that that is a time that you're kind of in limbo so yeah. you might as well use it productively. <laughs> exactly. It's like multitasking. I love yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I always I always encourage people to do lots of balance work. It's, you know, I work with quite a lot of older women and I don't want them to fall and break their hips and stuff. And, you know, start, start brushing your teeth standing on one leg. You're already brushing your teeth. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And then it's really important that we reward ourselves as well because that then gives us these little boosts of dopamine and happy hormones and so even if it's you know you've done something you've you've set yourself out to do whatever it is and then you you know it, it a good hand gesture always works because it actually links your brain and your body together so even if it's a little fist bump or a little high five to yourself 
it really really helps and that's why you know when you if you go to an exercise class or something everyone claps afterwards or does a little whoop and it really helps you your body kind of go oh that was great even if it didn't feel like it at the time and you're much 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 more likely to go back and do it again so it really can literally be you know a little fist bump or a little pat on the back to yourself so that's all good um i also find that tracking my progress is quite a useful tool because i'm one of those people who like a little tick list and sometimes when we're trying to achieve something you get you're always going to get the day and I, it's unrealistic to think you're not you're always going to get those days where it's like i really can't be bothered and okay you need to listen to your body some days if you really are feeling exhausted something or you, your body saying to you, I just need to take it easy, then you need to listen to your body. But there are those other days where we can kind of think that our body's telling us that, but actually we know it's not. And it's just that we can't really be bothered. So on those days, if you've got a tracker, you know, literally a piece of paper, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and you can tick off the days that you plan to do whatever it is you're gonna do, it can really help because you can see when you you know if you've got a line of ticks you're like yes i'm doing it and it just boosts your confidence and you're so much much more likely to to carry on with it and and then the other thing which is going to really help is get yourself an accountability partner so there's a really brilliant statistic which is if you tell somebody that you're going to start something new you're 65% more likely to do it. But if you actually make an appointment with somebody to maybe tell them afterwards that you've done it or to do the thing with them, you're 95% more likely to do it, which is quite a big statistic. It's quite big, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, so, so meet up with somebody for those yeah. walks or those runs yeah. and check in on a WhatsApp group about whether you've done your meditation, whatever, all those little things. It's amazing how those tiny little things can make a huge impact, can't they? It's so true. I've just, um, I don't, I can't believe I've done this, but I'm, I've signed up to do my first ever marathon <laughs> next, um, next year because I feel like, well, it's something I've always, always wanted to do. And every time I watch a marathon, it makes me cry and I'm like, oh my God, I really want to do that. So I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to see if I can do it or not. But I, I, and I've told everyone about it. Uh, and I know that if I hadn't, I probably would be going, oh, no, now the marathon's passed. I'm like, oh, maybe I won't. But now I've told everyone about it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a good go. If my body allows me to do it or not, we shall see. But you know, I, and it's, it's not for everyone. But we'll see. But yeah, accountability is is um, it makes you stick to what you say you you want to do or you're going to try and do. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. So I think a bit of acceptance and lots of little changes, and we can navigate change quite quite easily, really. Yeah, exactly. I think it's all about keeping it simple and not overthinking it and being kind to yourself and not trying to do too much at once is, is the main thing. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, Polly. Pleasure. Pleasure. Pleasure.